Welcome back to another Motobob video where today we're going to be looking at the brand new update to BMW's big beast of a Tourer, the K1600. Now this is their direct goal wing competitor with a big inline six engine that's perfect for eating up miles with smooth refinement. So have these tweaks made it even more of an accomplished Tourer? Well in this video we'll find out with nine of the best new features and at the end I'll talk about one that I'm surprised is missing. So first up the engine, yes that's right, six cylinders all lined up across the bike. Bike. This configuration gives them plenty of power and torque for touring with luggage and a passenger, but also doing it with silky smoothness. Now for this year, peak power stays at 160 horses, but it's now made 1000 RPM lower in the rev range at 6750, so that ought to make it feel a lot more usable. One of the factors here is an increase in peak torque from 175 Newton meters up to 180, still at 5250 RPM. So those are some nice figures, and although peak torque torque isn't massively different, the extra revs do mean that it's quite a bit more powerful than its closest competitor. But the main reason to update the engine this year was emissions, with stricter Euro 5 regulations now in place. So the good news is the tweaks to the internals like some new sensors and software have cleaned things up enough to mean that they can keep selling it. On top of that, MSR now comes as standard which is their engine drag torque control system. It basically keeps engine braking in check when coasting or downshifting in order to avoid unsettling the bike or braking traction, and it does so by electronically opening the throttle valves to lessen the effects of the engine braking. Now personally, on a massive bike like this, and with it being a Toro, you might be riding in a variety of weather conditions, I'll happily take as many standard safety features as possible. Suspension also gets a tweak with their dynamic ESA or electronic suspension adjustment receiving a bit of an update. BMW claimed that it now enables even higher dimensions in terms of riding safety, performance and comfort. So it now gets a six axis sensor box combined with sensors on each axle and using those it gets a comprehensive picture of how the bike is behaving. That means that based on the riding style and road conditions it can adjust damping accordingly to give the optimal ride and handling. It's also tied in with the riding mode so road will feel a little more easy going whereas something like dynamic will firm things up a bit. On top of all that it gets automatic riding position compensation in all load states which is basically saying that it will set the preload automatically based on whether you you're carrying a passenger or luggage or both and in doing so it will make sure that the bike is sitting level. Now a nice safety improvement is that their adaptive headlight now comes as standard so it swivels by up to 35 degrees based on the lean angle of the bike. This is done to light up the inside of the turn improving visibility and therefore safety when riding at night. Now it also goes up and down by two degrees so the light stays level under acceleration and braking and for this year it gets the welcome and goodbye animations as well as the follow me home feature which keeps the light on when the bike is switched off so that you can find your way to the garage or the front door. Now the old dashboard was starting to look a little dated so it's great to see the 10.25 inch TFT display that I've been raving about carried over here. I tried it on the R1250 RT and more recently the R18 Transcontinental. Both reviews are linked to in the description but for me both times I tried it it was one of the standout features of the bike. Now it's absolutely huge so big that you can split screen it so you can have your riding day on one side and navigation or media on the other and also the design and layout is super easy to use. The only thing I will say is that the heated grips and seat settings are quite deep into the menus like several clicks. Most bikes just have a dedicated button on the switch gear but fortunately the K1600s get these four favorite buttons as standard and these can be assigned to a whole bunch of commands the heated grips and seats being two of them. Now the dash also gets smartphone connectivity for navigation and media playback and there's a phone stash above the dash which is splash proof, ventilated with a fan to stop your phone overheating and also contains a USB-C port for charging. There's also an updated audio system that's better integrated into the TFT dash and their intelligent emergency call system is available should you need to quickly contact the emergency services after an accident. But look, I've rushed through those two to get to this ridiculously cool paint job. I would never have expected to see it on a bike like this but I absolutely love it. All four of the bikes get some standard colours but they're up market option 719 trims are just that little bit more special. With this one in particular they say that option 719 midnight is particularly noteworthy and is only available for the K1600B and the K1600 Grand America.
America. The highlight of this equipment variant is the paint finisher Meteoric Dust 2 Metallic with the Galaxy theme depicted using a water transfer printing method. This is a method with which objects can be fully or partially coated with a pattern or graphic. Backing films which are activated in a water bath are used as the medium for the later pattern or graphic. The object to be coated is pressed onto the film in the water bath and immersed. During this process the pattern or graphic on the backing film is transferred onto the object. Finally a coat of two component clear paint is applied for sealing. As this is done by hand only each option 719 midnight is truly unique. But what do you reckon? Let me know in the comments down below. But look I did mention at the top that there's a missing feature that I definitely have expected to see here and that's active cruise control. That's their cruise control option that uses a radar to follow the vehicle in front at a set distance just like you see on many cars. And they were one of the first manufacturers to fit this onto a motorcycle with the R1250 RT and more recently they've used it on the R18s. Even in the first video they made about this tech they used the K1600 as the example bike. Clearly it's a feature that's really suited to a big tourer like this and I'd expect it on the GS soon as well so why didn't they? My guess is that they would have had to redesign the lights and fairing to accommodate the radar and this to be honest is a fairly minor update. There's nothing structural I mean there's some work to the engine but the rest is kind of software electronics accessories becoming standard fit or new paint options so perhaps there's a bigger update somewhere down the line because surely ACC is a perfect match for a bike like this. But anyway onto the price and you've got the bagger at 20,215 the Grand America at 24,410 and those two have more of an American style to them so you've also got the GT at 23,95 and the GTL at 21,920. So lots of money but to be fair it is a lot of bike and if you price it per cylinder it actually doesn't look too bad. But as always, I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments below. Would you go for one of these or the Goldwing? And also, if you enjoyed this video, then here's my R18 Transcontinental review. Thanks.